Good morning, dear friends, or good afternoon from wherever you are joining and worshiping God with us. Today is a new day. It's a new day with God's plans and God's purposes unraveling and unfolding in your lives. And so today's Mass is going to be offered specifically for all of you, for the intentions that you have been bringing to God throughout this time. We're bringing them to God today and asking that God's grace may be focused on those intentions. So today's Mass is for you. Please bring your intentions from you wherever you are in your hearts and let us pray for them. As we continue to pray for the needs of the world, we pray for those who have birthdays today or anniversaries or special events today. We pray that God may be with you and that God may bless you. We pray for those who are thinking about returning to work and are afraid that God may protect you if he so wishes that we get back to work. That God may protect your families and protect your children and protect your businesses and protect everything that you do. And we finally pray for our Pope and pray for our bishops, pray for our priests, pray especially for those who have died during this time. Our opening hymn for today will be, Holy God, we praise your name. Holy God, we praise thy name, Lord of all, we bow before thee, all on earth thy sects are plain, all in heaven above adore thee, infinite thy vast domain everlasting is thy reign half the loud celestial hymn angels choirs above are raising cherubim and seraphim in unceasing chorus praising fills the heavens with sweet accord holy 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 in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of God our Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, we are gathered here to celebrate God's love. In this Mass, we pray for the intentions that you have brought here. We pray that God, who accepts his offering from this altar, may also accept together with this offering your intentions, your prayers, your concerns, your thanksgiving and petitions. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Holy God, show your mercy to your people and hear their prayers. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Holy God, show your kindness to your people and bless their intentions and concerns. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Holy God, let the light of your grace lead the future for all of your people. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that celebrating the mysteries of the Lord's resurrection, we may merit to receive the joy of our redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, His Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been scattered by the persecution that arose because of Stephen went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but Jews. There were some Cypriots and Cyrenians among them, however, who came to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks, proclaiming the Lord Jesus to them. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart, for he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year, they met with the church and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist. All the nations praise the Lord. His foundation upon the holy mountains, the Lord loves. The gates of Zion more than any dwelling of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. All you nations, praise the Lord. I tell of Egypt and Babylon among those who know the Lord, of Philistia, Tyre, and Ethiopia. This man was born there, and of Zion they shall say, One and all were born in her, and he who has established her is the Most High God. All nations, praise the Lord. They shall note when the peoples are enrolled. The man who was born there, and all shall sing in his festive dance. My home is within you. All you nations, praise the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The Feast of Dedication was taking place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus walked about in the temple area on the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe, because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. 
My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one can take them from the father's hand. The father and I are one. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I will say uh, two things very quickly for our reflection. The first is from the first reading, and the second is from the Gospel reading. This, this first reading um, is very apt for this time. We see one very prominent figure in this reading, and that is Barnabas. Barnabas. So, um, now Gentiles were beginning to embrace the gospel. So the church in Jerusalem heard that Gentiles were also embracing the gospel of Christ, embracing salvation. And so they decided to send somebody. And the somebody they chose to send was Barnabas. He had a reputation. He had a very good reputation. Scripture says, he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit. He was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit. And so, Barnabas wasn't just a good man. He also was skilled in making arguments. He was a great mentor. He had a lot of skill sets, you know, that made him the best fit to do this work. To go to people who did not have the background of scripture, but yet had heard about Jesus and embraced Jesus. So Barnabas had to be sent. And scripture says, when he went, he arrived and saw the grace of God. Now, how can you see God's grace? Because God's grace is not something you can see and feel and touch. What does scripture, what does scripture say mean? When it says, Barnabas arrived and saw the grace of God. Now, the grace of God doesn't fly like a bird. Grace of God, the grace of God inhabits in people. What scripture was saying here, that means they could see the effect of God's grace in people. People being there for one another. People supporting each other. People living like they understand what Jesus was about. Love of the other, support of the other, encouragement of the other, sharing with the other. So they could see all of that and recognize, wow, God's grace is alive and present here. These people are demonstrating that. And that's something I want you to think about. If someone came into your life today, or in my life today, will they see the grace of God? He said, Barnabas saw the grace of God. Not like a bird. Not like smoke. He saw the effect, the activity of the grace of God walking in and through living persons. If Barnabas was in your home today or in your community today, will he see the grace of God? That's the first question I want you to think about as we reflect further. And scripture says, he rejoiced when he saw the grace of God, he rejoiced. And then encouraged them all to remain faithful and firm in the love of God. To remain faithful. He encouraged them to remain faithful and firm in the grace of God. Now, uh, Barnabas is a special person. And for me, he, he models the kind of apostleship that Jesus is calling you and calling me into. The kind of apostleship. Bar Barnabas was, was a different kind of human being. Uh, when I look at him, I look at the apostolic college and I try to find someone who had the temperament that Barnabas had. I can't find. I, I try to find someone who had you know, the openness of spirit and soul, I cannot find. He, he was a unique human being. And, and you will see 
his uniqueness right here. Now, at this time, Saul had been converted, but he still had the name Saul. He had not changed to Paul. He was still Saul. Saul had been converted. Saul tried to join the apostles in Jerusalem, but they almost killed him. Not the apostles, but people tried to kill him because they did not trust him. They did not trust him. So they even had to sneak him away for his own safety because people knew what he, how much harm he had caused the church. So when he tried to join, they would not accept him. So Saul returned to his hometown. He's from Tarsus, Saul of Tarsus. So he returned to Tarsus and stayed there where he was safe. People knew him there. At least he was safe there. Barnabas knew about that. No one else. Barnabas knew about it. Everyone else knew about where Saul had gone back to. No one cared enough to go and nurture the seed of God. Grace, God's grace in Saul. No one cared enough. Not the other 11 apostles or 12 plus. No one else. This man got up and went down. Scripture says, then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul. To look for Saul. He went to Tarsus. He knew about this man. But he went to Tarsus and looked for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him with him to Antioch. So Barnabas took Saul under his wings. And could you imagine, if Barnabas did not do this, could you imagine, if he did not go and take Saul under his wings, mentored him, and introduced him to everyone else, that this is a reliable instrument of God, could you imagine whether you and I would have the New Testament in its present current form? Could you imagine that we would have all of those beautiful letters that we read every day from Paul? I don't know. I don't think so. But that's what people do. Good people do. And you could be the next good person. You could be the next good person that God is waiting for something to show up in you. To see and support what is good in someone else. Barnabas was, had an eye to see the good in people and nurture that goodness. And we can see the fruits of that goodness through the life of the church, through the writings and ministry of St. Paul. He started with this one man, Barnabas, who did not allow Paul to remain in Tarshish. He brought him. Could you imagine? These two, these two, not, not an apostle in the real sense. These two, Barnabas and Saul, who became Paul, did what the 11 apostles could not do in Jerusalem. As that tells you how grace can work. Scripture says, and it was in Antioch where Barnabas and Paul had been preaching for one year. It was in Antioch that the disciples first began to live like Christians. Not in Jerusalem. Not in Jerusalem. It was in Antioch where these two had taught people, had impacted people, had, had manifested God's grace. That people's lives were so transformed that they looked more like Christ. That's how the name Christians came up. It was in Antioch. So, you could be Barnabas to somebody. You could be Barnabas to somebody. I could be Barnabas to somebody. Someone is out there right now at this time who is needing some encouragement, needing some affirmation, needing some grace to be touched by grace. You could be the instrument. And I pray that you make yourself available, accessible, and reachable. That's the first thing I want to say. And very quickly, I will run to the gospel reading. Scripture says in this gospel, the Jews said to Jesus, tell us plainly, tell us plainly if you are the Christ so that we can believe. That means almost like give us the expo, give us the answers to the questions. Right? Why are you forcing us to go look for the answers ourselves? Make it easy for us. I, I, I see how 
you and I would behave like this. We want God to like do everything and save it for us, make it so easy for us. We could not see. Jesus was doing his ministry and he says, look, you hear what I say, you see what I do. How are you unable to see that? Okay, you want me to just make sure I prepare the food, bring it to table and then feed you with it. How often are we asking God for the same thing? Make it easy for us. That the future is going to be good. So send me a letter. Yes, even though your word has said it, that I hold your future, I find it hard to believe. Please God, could you send me a text message so that I can see it and alert that it's true. That's what we seem to seek very often. God says, hey, I am with you. We find it difficult to believe. We want to make sure that we find it. We see a sign. He shows us a sign to confirm that he's with us before we believe. So, so when I read this text, I'm seeing myself, I'm seeing you, I'm seeing a lot of us here. We want God to give us a sign that is so visible. And in most cases, when he gives us those signs, we still don't see it. Very soon, he will give us a sign of his presence. But I don't know if we are going to see his sign. This sign as the presence of God in your life or in my life. He has spoken to us in his word. I don't know if we believe that this is him. You may want something more, more, more radical, something more, more, um, something more sensational, you know, just to convince us. So I hope that we will have the faith not to wait for the Lord to make it to to tell us plainly, but that we can see the manifestation of God, like like um, like Barnabas was able to see. He, he didn't see God fall down from heaven. He saw God in people that he encountered. I hope that you and I, whether by hearing people's vo the voice of God's preachers or by participating in virtual space in the Eucharist, that we can see God's manifestation of grace in our lives. As always, I'd like to end by reminding you that you are the delight of God. God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we want to thank you for the gift of today. Today we are spending our time and just praying for all of your children who have availed themselves of this moment of grace to come to you and to bring you their concerns, their worries, their expectations, their plans for the future. We ask, O oh God, like incense, that all of those may rise to your altar in heaven and from heaven that you may bless them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have birthdays or anniversaries or special events today and in this month. We pray, dear God, that you may watch over and bless those events in their lives and give meaning and value to those events for life-changing aspirations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I want to pray today for families. I pray for a special family that is going undergoing um, separation and maybe divorce. We just pray that God may help them find resolutions. As we pray for this family, we also pray for any family that is stressed or strained right now, that the Holy Spirit, the Reconciler, may, inter may, may intervene and reconcile differences and, and keep families together under God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for young people who are looking for employment, Pray for those who have lost work at this time. Pray for people who are awaiting the opening and starting of life again. That God may make sure that they are safe. And as they get into the workforce, that God may guide their steps in every good way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our dead. Pray especially for priests and religious who have died from this virus. We pray for members of our families and friends, people we know, and many that we don't even know, who have died. The thousands and thousands who die each day, oh God. Please show them your mercy. Please accept them into your presence. Please forgive their sins. Please grant them rest with you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick. Pray for our doctors and nurses and all medical workers who care for them. Pray for all those we have promised to pray for, who are sick of other ailments in life. 
we ask Almighty God that from this altar the grace of healing may spring into their hearts and into their lives and to help them find healing and recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this month of May, let us ask our Blessed Mother to pray for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Blessed are thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made it become a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands become our spirit children. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for the good and the good of God, his holy church. Amen. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in this Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask this Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, that in this time above all to Lord yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us that defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remain by God your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, may merit to be co-heirs with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. And from me, to you and your families, may the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ find you and live with you. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be free. Now, let us take a minute for spiritual communion. Gracious God, you are forever present in your body and in your blood, your church. The church today is gathered around the world, unable to celebrate and participate physically in this sacrament. May your angels, O oh God, be with your children all around the world. May your angels be the instruments to minister this sacrament spiritually to your children. May the effect of this sacrament be felt in greater ways than we could ever imagine. And we ask all of this through the same Christ our Lord.
let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayer that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring us your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal, eternal gladness in the next. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for making time to join us at this Mass. I pray that God may be with you and that God may bless you. As always, I like to end everything I do by reminding you that you forever are the delight of God. Be special and God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. To the prayers of our Blessed Mother, the Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our dismissal hymn will be hailed, Holy Queen, and throned above. Hail, Holy Queen, and throned above. O Maria, hail Mother of mercy and of love, O Maria, triumph for me cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim, Heaven on earth resound the hymn, Salve, Salve, Salve Regina. Hail Mort, hail life, our sweetness ye below, O I hope in sorrow and in woe, O Maria. Triumph for ye cherubim, sing with all ye seraphim. Heaven on earth resound the hymn, salve. Salve, Salve, Regina.